everybody. This is Joseph P. Farrell with news and views from the Nefarium on Thursday, July 13th, 2023. Lots to cover today. So let's get started. First up, of course, is our housekeeping. We are having a vid chat tomorrow. Uh, as usual, there's going to be a weather cycle moving in, but they're saying that it is supposed to move in during the night and early tomorrow, which means I'm going to try and squeeze in the vid chat between one round of storms tonight and then the other round of storms late tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night. Cross your fingers that we can do this and that I'll be able to get some sleep uh, before the vid chat. Now, chances are, folks, that the vid chat will be starting early. I guess anywhere from 12.30 to 1.30, depending on when the storms move out. And, of course, also dependent on whether or not power is on or has been knocked out. If I don't show up by, say, 11.30, or pardon me, 1.30 in the afternoon, then just assume that I've lost power and it's not coming back on. If that should happen, folks, I will archive all of the current questions and comments and save them for a makeup vid chat sometime in the future. But barring all the weather problems, we are having a vid chat tomorrow between 12:30 and 1:30. I'll probably be in there early for the pre-chat as usual. Now, today's uh, little article is courtesy of uh, our good friend E.G., who also sent it along with a bit of speculation of his own about what may be going on in his opinion. I have three different scenarios. In fact, I think this little example is a classic case of stacking functions, as Catherine Austin Fitz likes to say, or combining multiple objectives in one operation. Uh, I want you to bear in mind uh, since we're going to be talking about the NATO summit in Vilnius, or Vilno, as it used to say, this is a city that has passed back and forth between Poland and <laughs> Lithuania many times in its history. It was part of Poland before World War II. It's now part of Lithuania. But anyway, it's right there on the old Polish border, pre-World War II border between Poland and Lithuania. Vilnius and the summit is the topic of today's news and views. Because you'll all be probably familiar, at least most of you familiar, with those pictures that have been circulating of people meeting at the summit with poor Volodymyr Zelensky, the corruptocrat in chief of the Ukraine, standing by himself as always in his ridiculous t-shirt and cocky fatigues, uh, standing by himself while all the immaculately and well-dressed ladies are hobnobbing with their husbands who are also in suits, and they are completely ignoring Zelensky. Uh, talk about the cold shoulder message, but we're going to get back to that because there's a message in today's news and views for Mr. Zelensky of the Ukraine. The title of the article that I want to share with you, and I'm just going to be quoting a very few paragraphs from this article, because I think the paragraphs are hinting at what the game has been. So let's start out here. Quote, <clears throat> The article's titled, NATO Tokyo Office is still on the table, says Stoltenberg. Quote, NATO's plan to open a liaison office, <laughs> I love it, in Tokyo is still on the table, Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said Wednesday, even as the alliance's annual summit closed without a decision on the Indo-Pacific hub. His comments contrasted with those of French President Emmanuel Macron, who said at his own press conference that the Indo-Pacific is not the North Atlantic. But at the press conference in Vilnius, Stoltenberg was asked whether the Tokyo office discussions were over, 
given that the proposal was not included in the summit's joint communique. Now, you have to understand something here, folks. Prime Minister Kishida of Japan was in attendance at the NATO summit in Vilnius, along with Zelensky, even though neither nation is seated on NATO. This is very, very important. Continuing. Earlier in the day, the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and Stoltenberg agreed on a new document detailing cooperation in 16 areas, including emergency management. The document called the Individually Tailored Partnership Program between NATO and Japan for 2023 to 2026 lays out areas of cooperation that include cyber defense, strategic communications, emerging and disruptive technologies, space security, climate change, maritime security, and arms control. Now, let's stop right there because you may have noted that there is a lack of similar documents <laughs> between NATO and the Ukraine. So let's continue. Two more paragraphs here, folks. Quote, some other newly expanded areas of cooperation include defense innovation and, listen to this one, this is very, very important as a clue to what's ultimately going to happen. The standardization of defense equipment. Now let me stop again there. After World War II, NATO agreed on standardizing equipment. In other words... Uh, Germany during World War II had a standard artillery, heavy artillery, field artillery caliber of 15 centimeters or 150 millimeters. The rest of the NATO countries in Europe during World War II, the British had their own set of calibers. The French and Americans, of course, had a standard uh, heavy field gun of 155 meters or pardon me, millimeters. So basically everybody agreed that they were all going to use 155 millimeters as the standard caliber with a standardized system of rifling and therefore projectiles and so on and so forth so that it would be easier to swap out equipment produced in France with equipment produced in the United States. In other words, French could produce projectiles for the 155 millimeter cannon in their arsenal and those projectiles could be used in American-produced cannon, and so on and so forth. Same with bullets and so on, all down the line. So in other words, standardization of defense equipment is the central feature, one of the detail features of NATO planning. And now Japan is going to be involved. This, to me, folks, is an important clue that the NATO liaison office in Tokyo might just as well be the office of, of NATO to its member country, Japan. That is the ultimate objective here, I think, is the expansion of NATO into the Indo-Pacific. And there's a final hint that this is part of the agenda. Quote, Stoltenberg and Kishida see geopolitical interconnectedness in similar ways. Quote, security is not regional, but global, unquote, the Secretary General said. So in other words, NATO is telling you right there that it is no longer merely a regional or international defense organization. It is now, in the eyes of Mr. Globalone, it is now the organization that is responsible for security and military affairs of Globaloneism itself. Now, that is a clue. So, we have here, in my opinion, three different objectives that are going on at the same time in the recent NATO summit. The first is, very obviously, the message to the Ukraine. No, you're not getting into NATO. And, in fact, you'll notice they're not even talking about opening up a liaison office. <laughs> okay? So, in other words, get to the back of the line, Mr. Zelensky, and I really think that this message is saying that NATO 
understands that the Ukraine has lost the war. There's no amount of equipment that the NATO allies can pour into the Ukraine that's going to save their butts. And if, if there was any message that was conveyed to Mr. Zelensky in private, I rather suspect it was get your butt to the negotiating table now and save what's left of your country so that there will be something to seat at NATO eventually in terms of membership. But I think the cards are on the table, and I rather suspect that if if things do not escalate in the Ukraine, wildly out of control, that we might see some sort of settlement as obtained during the Korean War uh, with a kind of stand at your current uh, borders of occupancy and, and we're calling it quits. That's my guess. So the first thing that this summit accomplishes is a message to Zelensky. The second thing and I think this is a plausible scenario, is the scenario that E.G. shared with me when this article came in an email from him. And that is that NATO is gearing up to try and manage all the fighters on the card. In other words, think of this as, as the staged kind of world wrestling types of, of scenarios that you see on, on so-called sports television. In other words, a fixed, purely theatrical fight where both contestants on the card, uh, in the boxing match, are controlled by the same people. This is a perfect way in a global only system to stage wars or conflicts and also to manage the profits that flow from them. And this is the old game. They've been doing it for a long time. But imagine being able to do it with an integrated command structure. This would make the whole operation much smoother. So I suspect that this is the second thing that they're out, just to, just to create a structure by which it is much easier and more efficient to manage staged conflict. The third thing, and this is what occurred to me when I read this article, is we're watching now the steps being taken to transition NATO into the actual global command structure for a global military. In other words, NATO, they're trying to position NATO to become the military wing or the military arm of the UN Security Council eventually. This, of course, is going to be facing opposition from the Chinese and the Russians who have, of course, a permanent veto on the Security Council. But, you know, where there's a will, there's a way, and they will finagle their way into this one way or another. Now, failing the UN connection, they will simply transition NATO into the global military command structure with the global military itself. Now, this puts NATO in the approximate same position as the European Central Bank is with relation to the member states of the European Union. In other words, give up your national sovereignty over your currency. Well, the NATO structure is also meaning that you give up your national sovereignty over your own military and turn those military over to a centralized command structure. This is what's going on. Um, and by inviting Japan into the mix, the intention is clear that they intend to expand this network or this alliance system into the entire globe. That's what's going on. So the question is, why are they creating a a global military? Why are they taking the steps to do this? Who are you going to fight if you're not staging wars in EG's scenario? And this is the aspect of things that I suggest points to something space related. Because again, you'll notice in the article, part of the cooperation agreement between NATO and Japan includes areas that definitely concern themselves with space. So in other words, they're creating a command structure to fight a space war. 
And the question is why? Uh, who are they going to fight? That's my question. Who or what do they know about or what are they going to stage with their unified command structure? Uh, all of these questions, I think, play into each other. In other words, I'm envisioning a kind of EG scenario with somebody in space that may or may not represent a real threat. It could be an entirely virtual made-up threat but in other words, you need a, a global command structure to even carry out that kind of, of interplanetary false flag, so to speak. So in other words, there is a lot behind this little article that I think is at work. But those three things, I think, at least are the minimum here. We've got a clear message to the Ukraine to cool your jets. You're not getting in right now. You may never get in. Uh, show some gratitude and so on and so forth. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking the way that Zelensky looked during his shunning at the NATO summit, uh, I think it's beginning to sink in that he and his entire country were played for pawns in some sort of massive global loaning game. My hope and prayer is the Ukrainians wake up and realize that their enemy is not in Moscow. It's in Brussels and Swampington and London. Uh, but those are the three scenarios I think that we need to watch. And there's another final thing to watch. This summit, you'll note, occurs ahead of the upcoming BRICS summit that will be held in August, toward the end of August. And I suspect that at that BRICS summit, we might hear some news about the planned gold-backed currency or basket of currencies that the BRICS nations are trying to create. I suspect we're going to hear something along that line. And if that's the case, buckle in, folks, because you're going to see, in my estimation, quite a few more nations scrambling to get out from underneath the dollar hegemony and use another currency to trade in. And I would not be a bit surprised if some of those nations are in Europe. And that may be the other reason for creating this NATO command structure. Lots going on in the next few months, folks, to watch very, very carefully. All right, that'll do it. Don't forget, we have the vid chat tomorrow, which will be taking off sometime between 12.30 and 1.30. I'm not sure when because I don't know what the weather is going to do tonight. They are predicting storms. I am planning to have the vid chat, but just remember I might lose power and be unable to connect tomorrow afternoon. If I'm not in there uh, by 1.30, then something has happened, and I will simply reschedule the vid chat. But it is on. Uh, and we do have some good questions. Remember to get your questions in by no later than 10 o'clock U.S. Central Time tonight. So that's it, folks. Thank you for tuning in. God bless, and we'll see you on the flip side. Bye-bye.